Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you liking our backwards and upside down worship so far? It's fun. Okay. Good. Good. I'll take it as approval. Um, it took a long time to switch all the stuff around, and I'm too invested in the outcome to hear constructive criticism. So, um, so why are we doing this today? Answer number one: tradition. Tradition. Christianity is old enough that if you root around in the basement for a while, you can usually find somebody who already did the thing you want to do. Um, at least one time. Or maybe even for hundreds of years. In our case, it's, in the case of our It's Jesus LOL Sunday, we're working off Orthodox tradition. Easter, as this tradition goes, is basically a giant practical joke on Satan. Jesus is dying and Satan's like, yes, talk about a get. The Son of God himself is coming to me. And he's totally squealing like a little girl. And then surprise, Jesus gets to hell, looks around. Instead of staying put, he drags a bunch of people out. What's up, Satan? You've been pumped. What a hoot. So that's the origins of Holy Humor Sunday. We remember the day Satan got pumped. Answer number two, recess. More than once I've been in the room when a grown-up asks the kid what their favorite subject in school is, and the kid says, recess, which of course isn't a subject. And yet, you can learn some really important things at recess about who you are, how to play well with others, the best technique for getting a tetherball to fly around the pole. So guess what? This Sunday is recess. Let's have a prayer. Hey God, thanks for Easter. It's an amazing, weird, and slightly unsettling gift, and sometimes it's hard to feel like it fits us. It's much easier to don Lent clothes of self-recrimination and striving to do better. But personally, I am very grateful for the brightly colored, lumpy sweater that is your resurrection in love, because ultimately, eternal life in this metaphor is both handmade with care and totally priceless, and surprisingly slimming. So thank you. Amen. Does God have a sense of <laughs> Does God have a sense of humor? I really hope so, especially after the amount of things we've done today. Otherwise, we're all in big trouble, right? But I think there's got to be there's got to be humor as part of the divine package of goodness. You just have to watch people for a while or pay attention to your own weird quirks to know that someone decided to have a little fun while they were in the middle of creating everything. Jesus says, consider the lilies and the birds in the air. But what about giraffes or naked mole rats? What was God thinking there? There is some funny stuff out there. And like I was saying, people can get puffed up in ridiculous ways, even at church, maybe especially at church, when we get into that place where we want to put up masks and act like everything is okay, when, you know, it's not. Uh, years ago, the Baltimore Improv Group had its shows at Christ Lutheran near the Inner Harbor, which was a great location in the sense that it had parking. And um, this was early on, so we hadn't gotten much media attention. And a college student, I will leave the name of the college unmentioned, came to a show and gave us a bad review. And the basic point of his review was this. The show wasn't funny because there was no booze and because nothing funny can happen in a church. So I wanted to call him up and be like, girl, you don't even know church. Because here's the thing about comedy. Yep, that's my, thank you, that's my girl. That's, mm-mm, you don't even know it. That's, I, I'm white, I'm sorry. But here's the thing about comedy. The longer you know people, the deeper community gets, the easier it is to crack each other up. When's the last time you laughed really hard? Uh... You probably wasn't watching a sitcom on TV. Oh, look who's here. Hi. It was probably sitting around a table, having a meal with friends, or seeing family again and remembering that crazy time when Uncle Willie had a tire land in his lap at a car race, for example. A couple of years ago, Heather and I were on our way down to D.C. after church. This was before 6 eight, before even Anne. So we were planning to just head out around 11.30 and eat on the way. And I was like, hey, grab me a boiled egg. Uh, they're in the brown container. And Heather gets an egg, and we go on our merry way. And we're about halfway to D.C., and I get out the egg. And as I'm trying to crack it, I'm telling Heather how if you spin an egg, you can tell if it's boiled or not because a raw egg's yolk 
will kind of slosh around and keep it from spinning evenly. And then I'm like, huh, this egg is really hard to crack. And then I give it like a good hard smack on the dashboard, and it's a raw egg, and it just explodes, right? You guys all knew that as soon as I, all right. It got all over the dashboard in my hand, and I had to clean up. We had like a single thin t- McDonald's napkin in the car. And Heather, Heather laughed really hard, and then I was like, what? So I don't really have a point with that story. I just wanted to share it. Um, let's see. Where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. It's funny because it's true. In some ways, what humor is about, what it does, is make it possible to look at some horrible things and face some difficult truths without totally giving in to despair. As an example, for me, as a pretty stout liberal type, John Stewart on The Daily Show made it possible to be aware of news during the eight years of the Bush administration. So I will apologize for bringing that up to all the big fans of President Bush that we have in the room. Um, you know who you are. And I believe that God wants us to help us grow and become who we truly are. God wants us to grow and become truly who we are. And that God created the world in the spirit of joy. And that God is in the business of revealing deeper and deeper layers of truth. I believe that God has to have a sense of humor. Because otherwise, how could she handle it? So let's close with a few more jokes. This guy was climbing a tree when suddenly he slipped. He grabbed at a branch that was hanging in midair. But after an hour, he found himself getting exhausted and looked up to the heavens and cried out, God, please help me. All of a sudden, the clouds part and there's a voice booming from the sky that says, Let go! So the guy pauses, hanging there. And he looks up at heaven once more and he says, Is there anyone else up there? (laughs) All right. Okay, here's one uh, from our congregationalist forebears. UCC has some uh, pilgrims in our history. Thanksgiving Day was approaching, and the family had received a Thanksgiving card with a painting of a pilgrim family on their way to church. Grandma showed the card to her small grandchildren, observing, "The The pilgrim children like to go to church with their mothers and fathers. Oh, yeah, says her grandson. So why is their dad carrying a rifle? <laughs> it's because they didn't, he was using a rifle to make him go. Anyway, that's the joke. Does that make sense now? All right, the rifle is in the picture. He's being forced to, at gunpoint, go to church. All right, last one. Two men are talking about, what's that? Oh, thank you. All right. I've been working on this. I've been working on it. Fortunately, there's no hecklers in this crowd. I haven't learned how to... (laughs) Here it is. All right. All right. Um, Two men are talking about what they expect their funerals to be like. And the first guy says, I would like to hear that I was a wonderful husband and school teacher, and I made a big difference in the lives of children and in the future. Another guy says, I would like to hear them say, look, he's moving. (laughs) In the name of the one who surprised them all. Thanks be to God. Amen.